Welcome to Regio TV, the Overstrands online TV station. I'm Ansu Kaplan. This week, producer Gerard Grobler and cameraman Angus McCaskill takes us inside the current crisis in some of our local schools. Here's their special report. The Western Cape Education Department's Overberg region had a busy week. Soon after local schools opened their doors to other grades on Monday, problems started cropping up. By Tuesday, Overberg Director of Education, Helene von Seil, was rushing from one crisis to the other. Regio TV caught up to her on Tuesday morning in Claymont, where a group of parents were demanding that Claymont Premier closes its doors. This after a pupil at the school had tested positive for COVID. It is our children. It's not a school children, it's not a government children, it's our children. If our children die, who is their responsibility? It's the parents, it's not the school. The department must have said that the schools will open mid-September yeah. in spring. Then this would have worked. Yeah. Now the child is sick. The child is stressing emotionally. The child is, is suffering now because the child don't know um, what to do now. And the department is putting a lot of pressure on the teachers and on the children. I think that's totally, totally wrong. That's totally, totally wrong. The department must go sit and they must go and um, review this of schools opening now. Our children is going to die. Our teachers is going to die. What is the department going to say? Their condolences. They are going to say their condolences. President Ramaphosa is sitting in a comfort zone. Yes. Yes. If you are sitting on the ground, he cannot tell us what to do. We are feeling the pain. He's sitting in a comfort zone. Yeah. Number two, the school is not ready yet. Yeah. Yes. They're not even well equipped. They're not yes. ready yet. Yeah. The marks were done this morning. Yes. In terms of the yes. social distance, yes. were done this morning, right? Yeah. Even the sanitizer, if I can ask, directly to school i'm sure they don't have yeah. right yeah. our emphasis here is the closure of the school yes as my colleague had said the closure this the close of the school at least end of september when the winter is over with all due respect ma'am right yeah so collectively black and colored we took that decision and when we respect that some of the parents are not here we respect that as well the self-isolation is not possible in the informal settlement. Yes. Yes. You cannot self-isolate in a confined space, yes. which is a shack, yeah. one meter or two meter with your family members of eight or seven. Mm. If you're sitting in a comfort zone, tell me that I must go and isolate in a, in, in a shack. In that a is not possible. Yeah, possible. That is not possible. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I think what Kai is saying, we all agree, but unfortunately the president isn't standing here for us to attack. So what we've got is somebody from the local education department working under commands from people up above. So it's not fair now to point fingers at this lady to say, do this, do that. It's not her responsibility. She doesn't have that power. So let us look at, at how we can come to solutions here that's going to work for us. We claim what, as you said, we're working together here. The school must be safe, as safe as reasonably possible. That means masks, social distancing, hand sanitizing, surface sanitizing, deep cleaning or proper cleaning at least twice a day. It must happen. If I go for the choice of I am deciding based on what I see, based on the results that we see in the community to keep my child at home. There's a shared responsibility between you as a parent and again the school and the teachers to see how the school can support you and your child with learning material. And it does not have to be all of it online because we do not have access, we do not have internet connectivity, but we can print hard copy material for parents and for the learners. So our teachers, our paid employees, they must work. They must work. 
if that means that they have to change the way that they work. In other words, do more classes via WhatsApp, more classes maybe through other kinds of IT meetings, more printing material provided, then that's the way that it should be. But it's not that you can just demand from the teachers and now we expect everything from them. They have the school to run, they have mandates that they must adhere to at school level. So it's a question of how can we work together. Uh, this morning before I came here, in actual fact at 7 o'clock I was in Zoelisha Primary School. Uh, the same situation is, is, is happening. Uh, but, but what I could read from the situation is that uh, the parents uh, are panicking. Uh, there is a need for us to educate the parents on the procedures, on what happened. For instance, if you look at this situation here, is that the parents tested positive and then the child tested positive. Uh, and they got the results on Friday communicated that on Sunday. So the school basically only knew about that on Monday. This dwarfs with respect to them. But we have areas where there are more outbreaks is as in other areas. We have, for example, not so many cases in the swell and dam, but there are still areas. Nie. A bit minder in the Vendier still area, a bit more in Grabau, and then a bit more around the swell and dam, and so on. So this is a whistle, this is a whistle, and it means that there are many Ik wil aan principe verschillende tempo's aan. Dit, dit is hoe dit op je omlijk is. Die probleem hier in Kleinmond, is het geïsoleerd of ondervind nee, jullie die selle nee, probleem gelak anders? Nee, gelak nie. Ik denk, um, het is ontzettend belangrijk dat die correcte inlichting, die feiten, die correcte inlichting, dier kom na alle mense toe. Want ons is allemaal bang en dan interpreteer jy Iets wat je op Facebook ziet of een uh, inlichtingstuk wat jij bij iemand anders gekregen hebt of bij iemand gehoord hebt, en dan verergerde daar die vrees. Ons scholen doen alles wat hulle kan om veilig te wees. Ons het voor ogen dier, is my koersus gemeet, hy is aangeteken. Ek moes inteken met my eie pen, die boek is gesaniteer, my handen is gesanitise. Daar is sanitizer oorraad, daar is merke op die vloere waar mense moet staan, so die vijf gouwe reels moet dier elke mens gehoorzaam word. En die school kan nie vir elke kind daar voor pa staan nie. Daai communicatie moet dier gaan na ons ouders toe. En hulle moet dit verstaan. En hulle moet ook verstaan, daar is beleide, daar is rugleine, daar is wette waar binnen ons moet functioneer. Anders gaan ons allemaal net maak soos hy wil en dan op die ouwe einde laai ons kinders na onder. En dis waar oor het gaan. Het gaan oor niks anders. Het gaan oor ons kinders. But it's not all bad news. Some of our schools are, despite the odds, coping quite well. Some have all their kids back at school. The grad 1 to 3 must be in two sessions, because they are too much for the class. So they go from 8 to 11 and then from 11 to 12 to 3 go to school. The rest of the school is normal. Our grad 4 was too much for the class, so they are not in the house. En hoe vaar jy? Onder die omstandighede? Ek dink ons doen goed behalwe dat ek weet nie of ons die pas gaan kan follow nie. Die onderwijsers vermoed ek gaan zwaar kree. Die dag is baie baie lang nou. Die kleinkies ook om tot half drie school te gaan is nogal baie verwacht van hulle. Ja, op die stadium kom die graad 12 moet nou elke dag terug school toe. En ons het van maandag af die graad 11 teruggebring. En die graad 11 kom ons terug met die alternatieve dagstelsel dat elke tweede dag school toe kom. En ons het dan ook vir die departement laat weet dat ons reg is en ons is op die graad 10 terug te bring. So vandag op die dinsdag is die graad 10 sy by die school. Hoe dink ons, dit gaan goed. Ons voel dit gaan goed. Ons, die kinders is gehoorzaam, hulle doen wat ons wil vraag. Met die sociale afstande tussen mekaar. Die klasse gaan goed. Ons moes bykie klasverskuivings gemaakt het van onderwijsers wat na ander klasse beweeg het. Maar anders is gaan het goed. The latest available figures for COVID-19 in the Overstrand stand at a total of 870 cases. On Monday, the Western Cape Department of Health said in a statement that 40 people in the Overberg have died as a result of the disease. The department said that on the 5th of July, there were 32 patients in hospital in the Overberg. 
of whom 11 were still under investigation. Hermanus, Hansby, Grebau and Verliersdorp are now regarded as hotspots. The proposed bypass for Hermanus is an emotive issue. The route will pass through the Fernkloof Nature Reserve. Two years ago, the people of Hermanus objected vehemently to the proposal, with 75% of respondents against this. But like a zombie, this proposal will not die, Well Coast Conservation said this week. Well, this proposal for a road has um, been going a long time. We've been dealing with this for years now. The last time we were asked to comment on the road was two years ago. And then over 75% of people who responded were against the road. But what is it really about? Why is Whale Coast Conservation objecting? We object in principle. It's the principle of um, pr the protected areas that we need to protect from any kind of development that isn't um, the reason why a nature reserve was proclaimed in the first place. So we are offering a webinar to explain to people who are interested why we are objecting, what are the salient points, how can they have their voices heard as well. The webinar will be on Wednesday, the 15th of July at 6 o'clock. Anyone can join. And we ask you to keep going on this. We're nearly at the end. Let your voice be heard and let's scrap this ill-conceived road finally and permanently. Make a note in your diary. Wednesday, 6 p.m. We move on to municipal finances. The Overstrand municipality was one of only 21 municipalities countrywide that received a clean audit from the Auditor General. Most of the 21 municipalities that received clean audits are in the Western Cape. While a clean audit is laudable, it is unfortunate that what is supposed to be a benchmark for entities working with the public's money has become an accolade. The Auditor General's recent report clearly shows that municipalities are in meltdown. Only about half of the 229 municipalities in the country received unqualified audits. The Auditor General found that some 71 municipalities were non-functional. Some 38 could not be audited at all. According to the report, more than 1 billion rand was spent on consultants and over 32 billion was classed as irregular expenditure. It is clear that many municipalities have in fact collapsed. The question is what will take its place? This week the Democratic Alliance released a supposedly secret document that seems to suggest that government is considering a command type council on district level. Something similar to the National Command Council, but on a local level. If this is indeed the case, it could have important implications for our democracy, and we need to keep an eye on it. On to other news. The Municipal Office in Almanis for driving licenses, motor vehicle licenses, and the vehicle testing station opened their doors again on Tuesday after being closed due to COVID. On Wednesday morning, there were long queues. With some staff still recovering, the offices are only working at 50% capacity and can only help a limited number of people per day. The Hansby and Claymont licensing offices are closed at the moment due to staff shortages. Time for our weekly analysis of the local news. Let's go to Johannes Fruenemann. I begin today with a story in the village news where a photo of a great wit high that is angefall is by Moord Walfisse. And it's very interesting that uh, the village news that usually is a good news current bekend staan and himself graag so positioned with this bepaalde the story before that he led it. He is also in the in the Hermanus Times, but it's 15. But the photo is for me personally a bit unstuartelijk and not what I graag op a current so far, but it's not more than what you each is own. And the people would think that it's a good story to read here this week. The Hermanus Times itself has also a whole lot of other stories that we ask us to ask. But it's very interesting, if you look at the Hermanus Times for upstand special edition, and this is an indication that this is not a common typical Hermanus Times, is not. As you do it, you come to know that there are a lot of stories from buur, dorpen, 
En dit wat sê van die sister Korante van die Hermanus Times, wat hierin opgeneem is. So, so is dan mense van die Perl, en mense van die Weskes, en van uh, Robertson, en dit is meer sê as dan my stories kry. So, miskien nie so baie nies oor uh, Hermanus hierin, as wat mense verwacht nie, maar dit is waarschijnlijk die uh, gevolg van die COVID-19 situasie, waar die redacties van die verskillende korante hulle berichte poel, en daar het word dan korante saamgestel, so dat die korante die verskillende dorpe, die verskillende titels, waarschijnlijk baie die sille sal lyk, behalwe natuurlijk nou vir die voordraaie. So dit dan wat betref die Hermanus Times, wat ter loops, een belangrike story het ook op die voorblad, oor een persoon wat COVID-19 gekry het, en wat gevoel het dat dat sy een bykie gestigmatiseerd is daar, so lees gerust die story in die week sy Hermanus Thuis. Laastens dan die Overstrand Herald, wat focus op die skole situasie in Kleinmond, en natuurlijk ook die Bobiane, so in ons korante sal jy altyd een story kry oor die diere, oor die veld en die pracht van die omgeving hier om ons. The Overstrand used to be a leader in recycling. This came to an abrupt end when the municipal recycling plant in Hermanus was burnt down during protest action in 2018. More than two years after the riots, the plant has still not been rebuilt and most residents have no alternative but to put out their recyclables with their other waste. Earlier this year, the municipality announced a tender for the new plant and said it would hopefully be completed before the end of the year. But then came COVID and the lockdown. There is now very little likelihood that the project will still be completed this year. In the meantime, some enterprising individuals have used the opportunity not only to do us as residents a valuable service, but to also create job opportunities. One such person is Klaas Kurt of Ingomso Leletu Recycling in Hermanus' industrial area. Ons het net so, net so een maand voor die lockdown begin, het ons hierdie ding begin, en toe is die lockdown in, en toe kan ons nog nie verder nie, en ek het maar so gaan by die plekke gaan soek soos OK, en Jokies en Kerry het ek had waar wel een kaart word, want toe het ons die gebouw nou klaar, en toe kom stok ons het die zo, ons kom stok het die. En in tussentijd het julle julle klomp kliënte weig? Ek het so toe so kliënte opgestop, ja. Het julle idee van hoeveel kliënte julle het op kliënte? Ek het nou idee, toe so nou opgenoem het, as OK, Jokies en Kerry, dan is het Kreisense ding is is, dan is het Newton Johnson sinne wat na ons toe kom, en dan is het versammel iets het op alle botels ook ge... En ek sien is heel wat mense wat kom en hulle goed bring. Dat sê, precies sê al dit nie wat in die dorp is, ons sê al, hulle het nou achtergekom en toe kom hulle, en hulle ondersteun ons toe, en ons recycling die blikkies, die plastiek, maar die kaartbot is eindelijk die mijn, is eindelijk die mijn ding. En dan is die koeldrang blikkies, kook met die kiepe gietie, Kouk is een van ons grootste wat vir ons die blikkies verskaf en wat vir ons die kanna 2 liters verskaf alles ons kreeg baie van kouk af En hoeveel werkgeleentede skep jy? Kijk, ons is nou op een heilige omblik is ons 1, 2, 3, ons is 4 Ons is 4 Our featured business this week is Co-Unity in Hermanus A new, unique venture by two young entrepreneurs so Co-Unity is a shared workspace in Hermanus. We're the first shared workspace in Hermanus. Uh, we offer a variety of private offices, open workspaces, as well as cubicles. Our shared workspace is let out on a no-risk basis, on a month-to-month -month basis. So you only pay for what you use. So you get super fast Wi-Fi with it. You get a desk, you get a cleaning service. Uh, there's security and on top of that we've got a coffee shop which services both the public and the shared workspaces. So our main purpose here was to bring the community of Hermanus together, connect people in a shared workspace with very minimal risk. That's it for this week. Have a good week, stay safe and remember the five golden rules. <laughs>